Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tim Pan Alley 2. I'm your host, Dura Liang. And I'm your other host, Sam Rosenblatt. We are very excited to bring Tim Pan Alley 2 as an online concert for the very first time. Also, this time we're trying something new and we're interviewing each artist about their process before their set. So Tim Pan Alley 2 is a free concert series. We partner with Dixon Place. Each time we will bring three musical theater writers in and we let them present their new works. For this concert, we have Matthew V. Solfi, Gabriella Balsam, and Josh Benami. Without further ado, here's our first interview with Matthew V. Solfi. Hello, Matt. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys? Doing great. Doing pretty well. Hey, Matt. Hi. Um, so yeah, welcome. Um, why don't you give us a little background about yourself? Tell us about your writing history and all that jazz. Um, sure. Uh, well, I'm from uh, Coscob, Connecticut, uh, and I started writing songs with my friends in undergrad and then went to get my master's in it uh, and just graduated in that this past spring. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, so Matt, uh, according to your bio is that you had, had a degree in composition and then you just finished a musical theater writing program as a words person and you also teach and uh, music direct. So how this experiencing, uh, how this experiences shake you as an artist? Well, I guess um, the biggest thing for me is that it provided, I think, some perspective on the entire process so that uh, I have some experience in both music and words, uh, coming from like the source of the performance, and, and then also some experience uh, translating that to an audience or working with an audience member or someone who's newer to music. Uh, so the perspective's nice. Uh, sometimes it's hard to write creatively with all of that, but I think the perspective is good too. So Matt, also, um, what are your goals when you create songs and stories about queer characters? How does that play into the process? Yeah, I think that um, I try to use specific uh, queer experiences in order to tell universal stories, ultimately, so that it's not just for a queer crowd, even though it's definitely my home. All right, that all sounds very excited. Thank you, Matt. Um, so now let the audience uh, enjoy the songs that you are going to present. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me and enjoy the songs. Thought we 
next time this will end maybe next time you'll hit send Stepping out the shower with my booty on fleek. Having a Chipotle or McDonald's all week. Got my body on flow and my bowels feeling pretty. It's been so long, I'm ready to get down and dirty. Hey girl, it's 10.30 already. Bitch, 44th Street isn't that far. I live in Harlem. <laughs> Take a single breath and take hold of the tweezers. With each pluck, you just say fuck and try avoiding any sneezers. <laughs> it's a race, second place is for losers who forget to trim the lawn. When you mow, take it slow so you're prepped and preened and poised to dance till dawn. This is what you get when you're too long in the shower cause your washing and your swashing can take more than an hour. You're so dumb and your thumb has a hangnail that won't stop from hanging tight. I'm trying to get ready. I'm finally going out tonight. Get your pants on tight so they pull on your dingo. Pick your shirt so you can flirt with every John Paul George and Ringo. I'm a gay, it's a play with a role that's either sass or wit or brawn. I go out on the town never knowing where's the place that I belong. This is what you get when you're too long in the closet You obsess over the mess you made your life And try to pause it, but you can't You just rant till you're dressed But can't see any wrong from right oh, It's too much to get ready oh, I won't be going out, look Get here, girl, Mark is here Also, bitch, it's 44th Street, Brooklyn. Get it right. Brooklyn? <laughs> Fuck with what I'm wearing. It's stupid natting boots and lip gloss. I'm a wreck. I hate my neck and all my armpits smell like dip sauce. Every gay go away. I don't need another flag or rainbow stripe. But look, Mark, this is Park. It's not just another grinder or a swipe. This is what you get when you're too long in the city. You do waste away your Saturday to make your ass look pretty. There's a day it turns to May, then it's years that just stay hidden out of sight. I never will be ready I'm not going out to Yes, going out to, maybe going out to Coming, going, never going out to No
Here to talk with one of our writers, Gabriella. Gabriella, hello. Hello. Hi, Gabriella. So, congratulations. You just graduated from the Graduate Musical Theater Writing Program at NYU Tisch. Congratulations to you, too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so why don't you tell us a little about yourself, your writing background, where you're from, etc., etc. So, I am originally from just outside of Philadelphia. My background is actually in copywriting and playwriting until I came to NYU. Dish graduate musical theater writing program where I learned to write lyrics and I wrote my first musical, Lovely Song, a feminist AF musical, um, which you will get to hear a song from. Now I'm living in New York and we will see where the journey takes me beyond that. That sounds wonderful and very exciting. So Gabriella, so can you tell us more about the three songs that you're presenting, why you chose these three songs? The first song I picked was um, thoughts on the Looming Apocalypse, which felt, even though we've been working on it for about a year, very um, relevant to this particular moment that we are living through. And I just felt I could not, I could not not include that song. Uh, um, the second song that I picked was Maybe I Can Believe, which is, I picked in light of the fact that it is Pride Month and that I know this is part of a greater event celebrating what it means to be queer and that the characters that sing that song within our show are. But we decided it was the queerest song within La Voice On. <laughs> so to celebrate that sort of love and that sort of joy that comes with being part of that community. And then the third song um, everybody says is, I don't remember exactly how I came to pick that because I had chosen something else, and then I set this in at the book for time, but I th it speaks, I think, a little bit to the moment that we're living through as far as how people can speak and not feel heard, and certainly I feel that way at the immediate moment in a lot of ways, but also to the context of the piece that I had originally thought it was going to be for, which was, well, it was about a, a 1980s housewife who felt like she wasn't being heard, <laughs> and sort of had a little trouble because of that but um so that is why i chose those three songs yeah and so we're also just wondering like how different facets of your identity play a part into your writing and how you really have been able to express yourself through your writing i think especially in the stuff that you're about to see will be seen here um you see a lot of emo a way of expressing a emotional vulnerability in these songs, in, especially in these three. Um, I wish there was more joy in these songs. I think, <laughs> maybe I can believe I think has a lot of joy in it, but I think that's really where you get that. Um, I wish, I think it is a safe, the musical, th musical theater has become this like safe space to express things we can't say otherwise. And I think that it's a safe space that's particularly needed in this moment and in just in the, it has been needed in like the moment of the last few years, but especially in this moment that we've been going through the last few months as a, just as a, as a world population. And hopefully this will, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't think it will make people think, it won't give people, even if it doesn't give you joy, it'll make you realize you're not alone, maybe in this moment. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you so much. So, um, 
now we should let the audience enjoy the songs that you picked for us. So uh, thank you so much, Gabriella. Thank you for having me. And enjoy. <laughs> The world's going to end at eleven, and it's now nine. Freaking out, dude. Get the fuck in line.
says they hear you. Everybody's lying that they listen. And even though that may not be their contention, their words still drip heavily with condescension. And I can't just go. I can't accept a no. Everybody says you're too fat or too thin. Trying your hardest to be invisible and fit in. And maybe they don't always mean what they do. But they're starving you out, it may be killing you. But I can't just walk away. I can't pretend this is okay. Can I find my own ticket out? Staring down a safety filled with doubt. What else can I do? Save me, they pray. And that's not good for anything. No, not today. Everybody says they know you, everybody thought very wrong. And even though that isn't the end of the world, it's not. This is my life, and it's the only option I've got. And I can't see the ceiling from the floor. I can't live like this anymore. And I don't know what you wanted this to be. Everybody knows it's ending in tragedy. Thank you. 
Hi, everybody, and welcome to one of our fabulous writers, Josh. Josh, we're so happy to have you here. Oh, my God. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for doing this interview with us. So can you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Well, my name is Josh Ben-Ami. Um, I'm from New York. I just got my master's in musical theater writing from Tisch at NYU. I'm currently working on a bunch of music-related projects, but I'm also trying to navigate post-grad life and get some more full-time employment. Yeah, I totally understand that. <laughs> um, so all three of the songs you're presenting are from your song cycle, Unpopular Opinions. So why exactly did you want to write a song cycle about unpopular opinions? Because they're unpopular opinions. No, um, I think we sometimes let very small superficial things divide us. Um, I'm not talking about difference in philosophy or politics. I mean like the really trivial stuff, like if someone enjoys pineapple as a pizza topping, or if someone doesn't like Adele. Um, I think it's totally normal to have different opinions from one another, and I think that if we can unpack these things, ultimately we'll have more empathy for one another, and it's just fun. I believe everyone can relate to that. So Josh, like, are there any differences in your creative process when you create songs for the song cycle? Um, rather than create a song for a musical? Oh, yeah. Musicals are much harder. Um, the way I approach writing for the song cycle is very much on a song-by-song -song basis. Um, I think it's easier to sustain a given tone and character in a single song in a song cycle because there's less pressure to fit into the larger framework of the story of a musical and whatnot. Um, in this song cycle, none of the songs are really related to each other except they all deal with justifying an unpopular opinion. Um, for me also, I think that writing a song cycle also allows me to experiment in genres that I don't usually dabble in, and that's always fun. Yeah, that sounds very fun and very exciting, and we're going to get to hear some of your songs now. So thank you, Josh, for being here, and uh, let's get to those songs. Thank you. Let's hear them. Some people prefer the rain Or eating a bagel plain Or maybe they just don't like bagels at all Some people won't care to dance Some people like cargo pants It's statements like these that drive me up a wall they're unpopular opinions, but you nod and stay polite. They're unpopular opinions, and you know they can't be right. But you're living in oblivion, cause from others' point of view, you've got some shit opinions too. Some people don't like pets Some gents prefer brunettes And some folks really trust their local banks Some people want to go to war Some people won't hold open the door Some people aren't fans of Tom Hanks Oh, these unpopular opinions Some folks say them out of spite They're unpopular opinions And they're meant to start a fight No matter how they try to spin one You just say that can't be true But you've got some shit opinions too no need to expend so much energy We should just agree to disagree Deep inside, you know you probably might Have unpopular opinions Cause the world's not black and white We're entitled to opinions But it doesn't mean we're right it means you're living in oblivion And you'll have to find your crew 
Find those who share the same shit opinions as you. You're farther in your journey now You come to me and I just say Well You did something that's so great I still got a lot on my plate This is your moment Can't ruin your big day I'd never share what I really wanna say Happy for you now, but I'm still feeling like hell, feeling like hell. Smile and say congrats, but I am not meaning well, not meaning well. And maybe I am envious of all of your success. Or maybe your accomplishments remind me of the stress I'm under. If only I could steal your thunder You're basking in the accolades So I still keep up my charades I love supporting what you do I always want to be there for you Kudos to you for the goals that you have reached Sorry that I cannot practice what I've preached Happy that you've made it But there's nothing for me, nothing for me Meanwhile you've become the star I wanted to be, wanted to be and maybe I'm resentful of the gifts you seem to get And though you think you're doing pretty well for now I bet you'll blunder And then I'll steal your thunder But how am I supposed to understand? How is it you got the upper hand? I love you dearly, but this isn't fair Sometimes good news is just too much to bear What am I doing? Am I cheering you on? Or praying that you'll fail? So say that I'm the bad guy And I'm selfish and vain Selfish and vain I don't want your sympathy Sure, I'm very jealous that you've done so fucking much Or maybe it's the fact that people see you now as such a wonder If only I could steal your thunder Your thunder Steal your thunder It's nice to start a new TV show I really do need the distraction I'm loving the characters, villains, and stories The drama, the intrigue, the passion But I also hold fear for the hero I must know if she lives or dies I fear I'm too deep in the show's allegories And I just can't theoreticize I want to be spoiled, undeniably spoiled. All the plots and foils, all the conflict and subtext. Just give me a spoiler, does the girl get the boiler? I just need to know what happens next. I need to be spoiled, utterly, completely spoiled. 
I try to be loyal, but I must know what will transpire. So give me those spoilers, that will bring me much joy. Lers. In Westworld, Game of Thrones, Lost, and The Wire. I mean, isn't The Sixth Sense so much more enjoyable when you know that Bruce Willis has been dead the whole time? Or in Fight Club, how Tyler Durden isn't even real? Oh, or in Citizen Kane, how Rosebud is actually the name of his sled. But my favorite one of all is that Penn Badgley was Gossip Girl the whole time. Cause, baby, I wanna be spoiled, hot and bothered and spoiled, so that I can enjoy all the stories yet to be shown. I love knowing these spoilers before the hoi polloi learns. And although you sit back and groan, you know secrets are better when blown. Plus it's likely something you've already known. Spoiler alert. I hope you all enjoyed the songs we just presented. For more content, you can follow us on our social media channels. We're on both Instagram and Facebook. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back in the fall. See you soon. Bye. Bye. -bye.